Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Ask the Experts. My name is Jeff Hatzel. I'm a product manager at Blue Marble, responsible for Global Mapper Pro and our R&D team. Uh, I'm excited today to be showing off our new Global Mapper Insight and Learning Engine. Uh, currently, this features deep learning image analysis tools for land cover classification, building extraction, and vehicle detection, uh, along with fine tuning and retraining tools so users can adjust our models to their own data. Uh, this tool is currently in beta and we expect it to be continuing to grow and expand uh, throughout the year. So let's jump in and take a look. So anyone with Global Mapper Pro version 26 that's registered or under active maintenance and support will have access to the Insight and Learning Engine right within the app. Um, you'll notice that it's always going to be listed in the title bar. Uh, there's a toolbar and corresponding drop-down menu. Um, if you don't have Pro registered, it'll ask you for that when you click on the tools. So um, what we're going to look at today uh, is probably a couple different data sets. To start, we're going to look at this uh, aerial imagery of a boat yard, and we're going to use that for the inference process. That is the process of identifying things in imagery. Um, and so what we're going to do here is we'll look at land cover classification uh, and then building extraction and vehicle detection on this data set. Then we'll probably switch gears for a second and look at another data set. So to start, first thing I'll do is go ahead and launch the land cover classification tool. Um, most of these tools have very few settings. One of the perks of deep learning trained models is that most of the work goes in on our end when we create them. And then when you run the process, um, there's not much to choose for here. So we support either three or four band imagery the tool should pick up on what you have loaded correctly. Um, and then you can just go ahead and click start inference. The result of this process then is a land cover classification map. So I'm going to toggle them a little bit. We'll see we have our water. Gray is our uh, urban or developed regions. And then the shades of green are you know, forest or vegetation and things like that. And so we'll see it does, you know, a really good job here, um, even differentiating between kind of the higher and low vegetation along the curb here. Um, you know, we pick up some some vegetation on the edge of the uh, the boat yard here too. Um, so it does a really good job of quickly identifying all the land cover classes. You can always go ahead and take a look at the layers histogram to see what classes were found. So we have, um, most of it is what we call impervious, low vegetation, trees, and water here. And if we go ahead and close this tool, we'll turn off the output for a second. Then we'll go ahead and look at um, what we call object detection. And object detection includes both vehicle extraction and building detection. Uh, so we'll start with building extraction and I always like to apply post-processing to my outputs, right? So instead of the outputs generally going to follow a pixel boundary, but the edges of buildings are straighter and don't follow a pixel boundary. So this helps clean that up at least um, a little bit. So we'll go ahead and hit start inference and that'll run pretty quickly and identifying our buildings. And so the output from that is three separate data sets. So the footprint map, that's the raster map that's created under the hood um, as part of the analysis. You'll have the regular building footprints and then probably more we care about the regularized ones to fit the data set a little better. And so we'll see, we'll zoom in a little here, right? We got all our buildings. We didn't miss any, um, maybe a little extra shadow there or something that, that got the edge of that building. But overall, um, we've now identified our buildings. We have vector features that represent those building outlines, and we know where the buildings are in our data set. We will go ahead and then and also run a vehicle detection. And that process, again, is similar. It's, you know, more or less one click. Um, the app should choose the model. Right now, we only have one model for aerial satellite imagery. Um, and we'll go ahead and see how this does here. 
So the result of this process is uh, bounding boxes around all the vehicles. Let's zoom in a little bit here, and we'll see each vehicle in the image has a bounding box around it now. So we'll see where the vehicles were detected. Um, I was surprised when I first tested this and did a really good job not getting the boats. I thought boats might look like vehicles, um, except for this one. I guess we got one there that kind of looks like a vehicle, but otherwise we got all of our vehicles really well. Um, not missing any too obvious. And so um, now we have those as vector boundaries and you can, can work with them as you need to. And one of the tangents I'll take here is as we move into a different topic is, um, you know, I said we found most of our vehicles really well. And earlier I had also said we found um, our buildings pretty well too. And I could argue the same goes for um, our land cover, right? We did a really overall pretty good job at, at finding everything. And so what happens if you want to make that better or maybe you have some unique imagery that you want to process? That's where we'll get into looking at using custom models and fine tuning. And I'm just going to switch data sets here for a second to allow us to do that. So in this data set, what we have is um, some base imagery. And then I have um, surveyed building footprints from the municipality. And what I want to do is I want to use those as a control and say... Um, let's adjust the existing model because I'm always going to use this type of imagery. And here is some ground truth data that we could say, these are definitely buildings. In order to do this, I'll open the fine tuning tool. And this is where I'll adjust some parameters for the model that I'm editing. Uh, I can give it a new different name if you want. By default, it just gives you the date. Um, currently we have building and land cover classification that can be fine tuned, but vehicle fine tuning is on its way. Uh, there's a variety of settings here. Uh, and I'd encourage you to, to go read about these uh, as you're fooling with the tool. A quick click on the setting will show you a, a, some brief details. Um, basically, these control how the model is retrained based on truth data. And if you want, you could perform a completely full retraining. That's um, a little bit more in depth. You know, your data is really different. Um, from the standard aerial imagery that um, we've originally trained the model on, you know, for whatever reason, and you could do that full retraining. That'll take much longer, um, but you can do it certainly. So there's there's two options here. We could go ahead and start training since I already have ground truth data loaded. Um, but another thing that I can do is choose the option to generate training data. So we're gonna do that for a second and you'll see I get a layer asked here. I could create a new layer to put my ground truth in, but since I already have one loaded, it knows to um, do that. And so let's say um, I want to make or, or you know edit my ground truth data. I'm going to go ahead here where I don't have um, a building yet or a building footprint and just outline the footprint of that building. That feature will get added to the layer. Um, and now it will be included as part of my uh, training data. Maybe I want to add another one here. It looks like we don't have a footprint for this building. Yeah, we'll just right click there. And now I have that feature as well. When it's time to start training, just go ahead and choose start training. The model will initialize and what you'll have to do if you have multiple data layers loaded here, you want to pair them up and you can just drag to reorder in this list. Um, but in this case, right, they're both paired and we go ahead and hit OK and let that run. And so we're not going to um, go ahead and wait and watch this live here. OK, so the result of this process, and it really only took a couple seconds for, for the smaller data set. Um, I get a report here and that report's also um, accessible and saved outside of the application, but it gives you a summary of accuracy and some statistical scores as things are being trained. And now if I were to go into, in this case, we ran a building model, the custom model tab, I can see in this case, the new test that I made right here, 
along with a few other test samples that I've run in the past. So what I could do is choose to use a custom model and here's some summary information. It tells me where the log is if I want to read about it. And then I could go ahead and start an inference on that model. Um, I'm not going to do that now since we only have this one data set here and don't have anything different to compare to. Um, but that is how you would go ahead and make a custom model for um, fine tuning or retraining the models based on your data. Thanks for, again for joining us today. For those of you who are interested in testing out the Insight and Learning Engine, uh, it is included with Global Mapper Pro uh, until about February, which is the time of our 26.1 release usually. Uh, at that time, you'll have to update the application um, to get any updates that are available for the tools. Um, and then it'll be available until about September 2025 uh, or so before this becomes its own product. So as long as you're under active maintenance and support, you should be all set. Uh, thanks again for joining us and please feel free to send us any questions.